Welcome back to Vampire. I was going to continue the main quest, the whole thing with making Aloysius Dawson a progeny of mine, but actually I've decided I've been focusing on the main quest for a bit. Let's do some side quest stuff. One of them is super close. So uh, Charlotte Ashbury, Lady Ashbury's daughter, if you remember a while ago, they mentioned that their friend has been missing. And apparently they're just, well, their house anyway is just right over here. So let's go check it out. I think I found the entrance to Emily's house. So there's a, a doorway, or at least somewhere it looks like I could teleport to really far up, but I couldn't tell teleport to it from the ground. But if I go inside of Venus Crossley's house and go upstairs, I saw this door. Aha. Yeah, I remember I came out here. I, I don't think I did it on camera though, but I came out here and I tried to walk over here because it looks like you're meant to be able to walk there, but I can't, like I can't fit. And the door won't get out of the damn way. But I never saw that I could teleport up there. No invitation is needed to enter this building. That can't be a good sign. Oh. No sign of a struggle. It seems Charlotte's friend knew the killer and let him in. So, they're dead, I suppose? So, if an invitation was needed to come in, that must mean there's somebody, like the owner of the house, or a owner of the house, is here. So Jonathan can just feel that. I wonder what it feels like. Some sort of repelling force? Force field? Emily's love letter. My dear Jacques, I still don't know how to pronounce that. I can't wait to see you again. Tonight? Tomorrow? I can hardly wait. Since we kissed on that bridge while the moon was so bright in the night sky, I want to feel your, feel your teeth again on my lips. Teeth on my lips? Oh, the excruciating pain of your sweet bite on my neck, you devil you. For the longest second ever, I feared you were going to kill me right there on the bridge in the middle of the night. But no, my dear Jacques, you remain the delicate fiancé I know you are. And you were only teasing me. I can't wait to drink your blood. For good, this time, and come back to my sweet friend Charlotte as an immortal. To play with her. A little first, of course, like you taught me how to play with mortals. And then I'll turn her into one of us too, and we will rule the Knights of London and cleanse this city of its impure souls. Oh. Can't wait to drink your blood for good this time. Come back to my sweet friend Charlotte as an immortal. Do they mean play with her a little, like, in a bad way, nefarious way, like torture them? Or do they mean like genuinely like in a friendly way? Either way, obviously Jacques is a vampire and I guess was planning, or at least Emily was hoping they were planning on making Emily their progeny. Emily wanted to become a vampire. Something must have gone wrong. Someone is responsible for this mess. But who? Say, wait a minute, Emily wouldn't happen to be that new vampire that we found on the streets a while ago, would it? Uh... Wait, where- oh, this is investigations, not people. Hmm... I think it was Karina Billow? Or... Yeah, it's gotta be. Okay, well, it's not them. Blood. I should follow the trail. Does it go outside? Ah. Linker skull. No big deal. Low level. Have I been here before? I don't feel like I have. Mm, I think I've only run through here trying to get from place to place. I don't think I've really explored this area. I remember there were a lot of enemies last time I ran through here, though. But definitely worth exploring now that I'm here proper. They do so much damage. Oh, 
Hello? You look like one of the vampires, but I can talk with you? Who are you? What are you doing here? Ah. I could ask you the same question. I'm the Marquis de Bois Colombe, and I strongly invite you to find your own game, sir. I appreciate the invitation, but I'm here to solve the mystery concerning the death of a young woman killed by a vampire. A young woman killed by a vampire? Oh, <laughs> you're joking, right? Oh, I do love the British sense of humor. Hi, Jacques. And who exactly are you? I am Jacques-Michel Guillaume Florimond, the Marquis de Bois-Colombe, at your service, my dear cousin. Dear cousin? Are we related? We could be of the same blood, my dear. I tend to consider all Econs as family, don't you? No, I don't. What are you doing here? I recently decided to visit London. I've always dreamed of visiting a city on the verge of collapse. Such a delicate, yet intense spectacle. You take pleasure from others' misery. I have been a totally depraved and immoral creature since the day I was reborn, sir. And probably before. Well, if I wasn't going to kill you before, I definitely, definitely am now. What do you plan to do here? Take pleasure. Take pictures. Enjoy the show. Have fun. Believe me, I won't be the only foreign immortal who bought a ticket to the fair. I followed the trail of blood from her room to here. Oh, you're referring to that young woman. Yes, the meeting turned messy. I'm afraid I ruined my last wedding coat. So you admit you murdered her? I admit nothing, my good sir. I only regret the blood of that girl staining my clothes. Oh, blood can be so messy. What happened? She wanted to become one of us. Not the first time I have received such a proposal, but... Uh, I must admit her direct approach tempted me. And then what? The body rejected my blood. It happens, you know, sometimes even with voluntary prey. At least her gurglings brought me some fun, until the artery burst. I believe you or you deserve to die. Those aren't mutually exclusive. I believe you, but also you deserve to die. Your cruelty deserves punishment, sir. And what else is new? <laughs> <laughs> Shadow damage looks like it's the way to go.
100 shillings. Bad way to go. Rejecting blood. Something about a bursting artery and gurgling. God. Right. Well, while we're here, let's explore the rest of this place. So this is kind of a shortcut between... Yeah, this whole place is kind of a shortcut between the western uh, docks and the west end and maybe the hospital. I'm not sure if you can get through here. Maybe you can. Maybe now, especially since most things seem to be unlocked at this point. I remember I saw a lot of enemies in here. There's more out there. This place looks familiar. This is where we first found... We fought our first boss. Or no, second boss. I, was it our first or our second? First or second boss and we saved Sean Hampton. Isn't this that area? I remember we... Yeah, we came in here with the boat from there. I came up here. Sean Hampton was like right here. And this was the boss arena. So what's going on out here? Lots of skulls. Yeah, this is like the amazing shortcut place. From the west end to the north docks to the western docks. Um, I can teleport across this boat here and get to the other side, get to the uh, east docks. And you can go through here, by the way. Go through here and make your way back to the hospital or just go to the east docks and go back to the hospital. Very handy. Well, while I'm here, let me see if anybody needs some medicine. Just gave medicine to two or three people. I think that's everybody here that needs help. Now it's time to unhelp somebody. If you know what I mean. What the fuck was that? The hell is that sound? Someone getting stabbed? I don't like I was getting stabbed. What the fuck? Okay. Anyway, in the meantime, the boys are waiting. Uth Digby here, and is it Stella Cox? Edwina Cox. You. I can't bite Edwina because I'm not level five mesmerized, but I do have level four, which means I can take out Booth Digby. Remember, they're both complete assholes. Edwina Cox is one of or the leader of the Wet Boot Boys, and I think. What the fuck is that? That is a very disturbing noise, game. Please. It's like it's trying to jump scare me. Uh, I think Booth Digby is a wet boot boy. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Whatever. They're a complete asshole. So, let's bite him. Warning leaflet, I also got a weapon. Bunch of crafting ingredients. Yeah, I just suddenly thought, what if Edwina runs? Do you think they'll run since I killed them? It's not the worst thing if that happens. And I wonder what the consequences for this district are going to be. I mean, unless Edwina does something extreme, they should be good consequences. Ruth Digby was a very bad person. Alright, let's take a look at the stuff we just got. I don't think that was... The warning letter was lore. I think that is probably a quest item. Yes. Uh, oh, it's just about vampires. Stone let them fool you. West Enders unite. Defend your community. Da, da, da. That's oh from uh, C. Crossley, our old friend. It's a pretty damn good axe. So it's two-handed. Level four. It's almost all the way upgraded. Weapon abilities, blood absorption, which isn't too exciting, but I guess that's not bad, depending on how much blood it actually gives you. And it does a bit more damage than my other stuff. Like, for example, this good mace, which is level 3. If I upgrade that to level 4, and that's with a damage increase that I've got here that the other weapon doesn't have. If I got it to level 4, it would do 272 damage, and this one does 302 with no specializations. 
And they both have the same stats as far as attack speed and stamina. Yeah, of course this one does stun damage though, and this one doesn't. Pretty good, but not something I'm going to use. Oh. Oh, I totally forgot about the Remarkable Saber. We got that from Doris Fletcher. They, they used that saber to try to kill us. Let's take a look at that. A long saber, often carried by Navy officers. Uh, let's check the damage. So is it a lot faster? Attack speed 10, 15. So it's slower. Right, a higher attack speed would be faster, right? Just, yeah, of course it would. So significantly slower than the perfect hacksaw. Stamina is the same. And if it was upgraded to the last level, it would do 210 damage as compared to 240, but it has no specializations, so if we specialize it, it might do similar damage. Yeah, it might do similar damage, but then it has a significantly slower attack speed, so... Eh. It's kind of cool, but definitely not worth using. Oh. That's a new hint for Clarence. Good. The two dogs fault, they say. Then the gangs, the epidemics, everyone's throwing the blame. It's good that we had another hint for Clarence Crossley, because I really need more hints for Clarence and for Venus Crossley. While I was giving medicine to everybody in the western and eastern docks, thought I'd head back to the hospital, finish up some business there. It turns out nobody here actually needs medicine, surprisingly. I just assumed that they did. But regardless, we got some new dialogue with Dr. Swansea. We got a couple quests to do here. First, let's talk with Swansea. What news, Jonathan? I've heard you've now joined the vampire elite of London. Did Elizabeth tell you? So it's Elizabeth now. My, my. Things are moving quickly. I turn my back for a moment and away you go. How's the situation at the Pembroke? We're still holding out. Question is, for how long? What we really need is hope, Jonathan. Hope for a better tomorrow. I may have found the source of the contagion. Doris Fletcher, the actress. Thankfully, in the end, she was destroyed by fire. Really? Oh, please, do tell me more. Doris was a heavily mutated skull. Almost a new breed entirely. It's as if the disease had completely altered her mind and body. Highly contagious. As if the disease had taken control of her will? Yes. Once a beautiful and brilliant woman, she became motivated by hate alone. Oh, she was a beauty. I met her when she visited the hospital to cheer up the sick. Too bad the fire destroyed her. But it was probably for the best. Have you heard of similar cases? No, I don't think so. Except, perhaps, it reminds me of an old report from the Brotherhood. Well, more an article, really. What was it about? The author, a friar, referred to a rare form of contagion in a skull he observed during the Black Death. The carrier was always female. They called them Icors. Oh, we heard about... It, yeah, yeah, that's right. We heard about Ickers and I think it was a piece of lore a long time ago. I was thinking we would encounter one at some point. I didn't realize that Doris Fletcher was an Icker. Or Icor. Have you seen Lady Ashbury recently? Yes, she popped in yesterday. Told me about your new friends in the West End. Just a courtesy visit then. Yes, and no. She was en route to the docks, I think following a lead concerning your maker. I'll come back later. Thank you, Edgar. Always a pleasure to see you, my friend. Right, so we have two things to do here. One is we still have that quest related to finding the ingredients for that eager young doctor that wants to experiment on people. We still have to do that. And we need to find the third part of our father's testament. Remember, it's at the... They said that it was at the hospital that uh, I first applied for. It turns out it was Pembroke. Also, it seems like there's a bunch of things to read around this room. What are these? Warning letter. Pembroke Hospital, 25th of October. Dear Dr. Swansea, I must inform you of my deepest reservations concerning the Dr. Thorough Strickland and Harvey Fittick uh, case. 
Oh, this is from Ackroyd. Mr. Fittick has been hospitalized after a severe work injury. He may permanently lose the use of his arm if not treated adequately. Dr. Strickland claims that a surgical procedure may save the man's arm completely. I say it may also sever its functions for good if complications arise. Our young colleague is an audacious and daring surgeon who might prove a great professional in a few years, but for now he lacks the skills to perform such a risky procedure. Need I remind you of the mistakes he made in the past? Since Dr. Strickland refuses to listen to me, I strongly advise you to for forbid him to perform such a hazardous experiment. Indeed, they will not form that experiment. Letter of Rakesh Chadana. Rakesh. Oh, that's the uh, person who looks over the morgue. Pembroke Hospital, 4th of August. Dear Dr. Swansea, I will be glad to manage the temporary morgue as soon as it's opened. As I've already told you, I was a doctor during the war and I will be glad to serve my country again. I know it's not the same, being a physician for the dead as it is for the living, but I believe it is important to welcome and take good care of our departed too. Rest assured, I will do my best to fully perform this new duty to the best of my ability. Concerning the question of my qualifications, I'm sorry I can't give you anything more valuable than my parole. I swear to you that my regiment made me a doctor during the war, and that I saved many lives. If my word is not enough, you can contact the military administration to verify my experience and skills. They will confirm that even if I never followed any medical studies, the war taught me what a doctor really needs to know. Former doctor. So that's what they meant when they told us they were a doctor, or sort of a doctor. They were kind of vague about it. Not formally taught, but learned during the war. Is that it, or was there another thing? Ah. Rare species of vampires. This is from, this is from Usher Taldry. As a scholar and exegete. What does exegete mean? Of ancestral writings, I would never insist about the importance of taking legends and ancient folklores into account when searching for hints about hidden or lost secrets. A common mistake is to take what we know for an established truth and use it to discard any contradictory material. For example, we must consider the possibility of undiscovered species of vampires and the necessity to rethink what we see as the established truth about the various types of immortals, based on what we know and what we gathered through time. For how many centuries did we consider that vampire was the vernacular term for what we had learned to call Ekon? Until the day four explorers of the Brotherhood found proof in Siberia that Volkhovs were a lupine type vampire. We consider these creatures to be linked to the mythological werewolf. Now we know it is not true. What about the rest? What about the Raksh, uh, Rakshasa from my homeland? What about the Chinese Jingxi or the Puchin of southern Chile? And without even leaving the beautiful Great Britain, what, Britain, what about the stories about bat-shaped women sometimes seen flying around St. James Church in Louth? What about the creature only identified as a disaster in some obscure ter uh, testimonies, which tried to destroy London in 1666 by spreading plague all around the city? What about the Nimrod, the mythical figure of the restless vampire hunter, sometimes described by ancestral British Ekons as a legendary huntsman who only feeds on his prey's blood and could go unnoticed amongst the mortals and immortals? I tell you, my brothers, we never can be too sure of what we would find, what we could find, if only we could forget for a few minutes what we're supposed to already know. Right, a couple things to do in our office. I think we need to use the workbench to do the whole missing ingredients quest. I think? Maybe not. It said something about, like, laying down our in certain ingredients at our medical table. Um, I'll check that in a second. Something else we can do? Finally water this plant! Remember I found the water in that building a while ago? Done. Yes! Heck yeah. Feels good. I'm assuming a, a achievement probably would have popped up. I think I have those disabled though so that I can't see them. Not that I really care. Just watering this little plant is an achievement enough for me. So beautifully low res. Ah, this is the medical table that I need to bring it to. Just right next to the workbench. Strickland's project could be dangerous. I have a mind to report him to Dr. Ackroyd. Yes. Did I have to make the placebo before reporting them, though? <laughs> That's kind of weird. I think I'm actually going to report them. 
What they're doing, their eagerness and willingness to use people as test subjects is totally unacceptable. I know that you're a busy man, but I could use your help and advice. The great Dr. Reed honors me with a request. What is it exactly? Dr. Strickland devised an experimental drug for the Spanish flu that he asked me to manufacture. You know what I think of fringe medical experimentation? That's exactly why I want you to keep the result, Doctor. I made sure it won't harm anyone, but I'd like you to take care of it. I see. Put it in my cabinet. I'll give you the key. I'll make sure no one uses this medication by mistake. I'll do that. Thank you for your help, Dr. Aykroyd. Thank you for your trust on the matter, Dr. Reed. Key of doctor's office. Oh, I can finally get in that room right next to mine, right? Thank you for your time. We'll talk later. Put the medication in the doctor's office. All right, I'll go do that in just a bit. So I'm still looking for the letter that my father left somewhere here. It's just somewhere on hospital grounds. I wonder if I can finally get to the third floor and maybe that's where it could be? Remember I've tried to go up here and like I couldn't even interact with the door? Nope. Still. Still can't get to the second floor. Mysteries up there. Yeah, so I can finally open this door right next to mine. Dr. Tippett's Strickland and Ackroyd. What you got up here, doctors? Ooh, what is that? Gorgeous, whatever it is. Looks like it's made out of copper. It's locked, all right. Now that Dr. Aykroyd has been warned, he should make good use of this formula. It's locked. Ah, uh, everything's gonna be locked, isn't it? Oh, got a note. Another note? It's locked, all right. Letter to Dr. Swansea from Ackroyd. 14th of October. Dear Dr. Swansea, despite the actual urgency of the sanitary situation, I must inform you of a recent case of professional misconduct inside the Pembroke. Nurse Gwyneth Brannigan has been found guilty of undeniable unprofessional conduct and thus guilty of endangering a patient. Under no circumstances should a nurse diagnose and establish a prescription without at least informing the referent doctor about her conclusion. You know me, Edgar. I'm not against personal initiative when it is for the interest of all, especially during a crisis like the one we are facing. But we can't allow a nurse to perform a diagnosis and decide on a procedure to apply to a patient. The fact that said patient survived is no attenuating circumstance, it just means we dodged the bullet this time. I demand the strictest authority on this matter. I very much disagree. Is your issue just that they're not a real doctor and they're just a nurse, or because they're a woman? Remember, women apparently can't become doctors. I mean, like, during normal circumstances, yeah, sure, but it's a crisis. During a crisis, I'd say, yeah, go for it. M. Goswick's medical file. Mortimer Goswick, age 23. Status convalescence. Uh, patient shows many signs of extreme fatigue and major sores on the throat, mouth, and tongue, but no sign of flu. Refuses to speak. Claims it is too painful. Needs rest and healing of throat mucous membrane before any decision can be made concerning his release. Well, that doesn't give us anything new. Yeah, it's the person that doesn't want to talk. We've already treated them before for fatigue or whatever it was. How's that a new hint? So I heard there's a problem with your throat. Person who always talks about how you have a problem with your throat. According to the report I read, your unprofessional conduct put a patient in danger, Gwyneth. That's not true. I know when my patient's life is at risk, and I'm more competent than a lot of doctors that I know. Problem is, I'm a woman. I don't see what your gender has to do with your abilities, nurse. Indeed. Yes, nurse. Because I'll never be a doctor, no matter what my skills. 
I could make a decision that could save a life, but oh no, that's unbecoming conduct. 100% agree with you. And yeah, Jonathan, I don't see what your gender has to do with it. Yeah, that's kind of the problem. It shouldn't have anything to do with it. Have you heard of Elizabeth Blackwell? She was the first woman listed on the UK medical register. Change is slow, but it will come. And you will always have my support. To have the right to study shouldn't be determined by sex, skin, or wealth. That's all I'm saying. Your medical report says you're not affected by the Spanish flu. What do you think of that, Mortimer? Does it make me happy? Not in the slightest. If it was up to me, I would have left this place long ago. I know I don't belong here. And why do you think you don't belong here? I know the staff have more important things to do than look after me. There's plenty of patients here who need their attention. I've read your son's medical report, Beatrice. It's not the flu or anything life-threatening. What has you so worried? He was at death's door when he was brought here. I just want him to be better as soon as possible. He's not out of the woods yet, you know. He might need to stay here longer than expected. Take care of him then, Dr. Reed. People here only seem to focus on contagious patients. I worry my poor Mortimer will be neglected. Unfinished letter. Pembroke Hospital, 2nd of November. My dear children, sorry I did not write to you before, but it hurts like hell just to write these few words on bloody paper. Don't worry, Daddy will go out of the hospital as soon as the doctors fix his arm. In the meantime, if you need something, go see Mr. Chadwick at the construction site and tell him you're Harvey Fitt's children. You remember Robert Chadwick, the big guy with a mustache who helped me repair the house doors last spring? Go see him and ask for a few bob. He won't refuse to spare you a few. I'm sorry I can't work anymore for now, but we'll, we'll figure out something as soon as I'm out. Don't worry. Everything will be fine as soon as Daddy's arm is strong again. As soon as the doctors have fixed my arm, I... You seem worried about the safety of your family. And it's obviously the reason why your wound troubles you so much. I cannot give up on my children now. They both need me living. What about their mother, if I may ask? She died in 1915 during one of the first Zeppelin raids. We never found her body. Tell me the truth about your appointment as a medic during the war, Rakesh. The regiment administration appointed me by mistake. I had to learn the job on the spot, sir. Very hard, sir. But I rose to the challenge. Do you realize how many soldiers died because of that decision? You should have refused. Yes, sir. I swear I did, sir. But no one listened. When the first wounded arrived, I had to do what I could. It is an unbelievable story, Mr. Chidana. It was a time beyond belief, Dr. Reed. But I'm happy not to deal with the wounded. I prefer caring for the dead now. You can't impersonate a doctor. You can't improvise a medical education. People could die at your hands. You're absolutely right, sir. But as a field surgeon, it was more like being a butcher. Do you believe you have really helped these people? My ratings were within the averages of the regiment. I saved lives, Dr. Reed. Does that not say enough about triage and war surgery? Indeed. They did a good job. Amazing, considering the circumstances. About the use of garlic and wooden stakes. <laughs> Dear brothers, I must now draw your attention to a very important point. The use of garlic as a protection against vampires. Let's be crystal clear on the subject. Garlic will never protect you against these creatures. No matter how fresh, how strong, how smelly, garlic is totally useless as a defense. I can never say enough how damaging that novel of Bram Stoker has been. Yes, of course. Population... Population... Population of Slavic countries? That's weird. Population of Slavic countries place garlic cloves in coffins. Yes, of course, inhabitants of Santorini Island hang garlic on their windows. There would be so much to write about this place, and someday soon... I hope to go back to this island to further explore its occult tradition. But that is not to protect the living from the devil. It is to tell the dead that they are aware of their malevolence. It is a symbol. Nothing more, and nothing less. 
So please, by all means, yes, wear garlic, show garlic, hang garlic, and tell the shadows that you are not afraid. But if you're looking for supernatural protection, you will have to search much deeper into the forgotten secrets of the occult tradition. For here is the truth, my fellow brothers. Garlic does not repel vampire, but all the fresh plants will hurt them. It is as if their body could not stand the presence of botanical elements. I've seen an enraged vulp flee when whacked with a rose. Yes, a simple rose. I've witnessed a violent echon fall down and beg for mercy when stuck by a wooden stake. I don't know why it is so effective, and I would give my left arm to find the answer to that mystery, but the truth remains, nevertheless, vampires are very sensitive to fresh herbs, plants, and woods. From Usher Talltree. Oh, here's a nice little detail. This uh, room where that old woman was, like, there was blood everywhere, and I think the window was broken and all that. Basically looked like a murder happened in here. Now that some time has passed, they've cleaned it up and put in a new bed, or beds. It's ready for use again. Small key, minus one. Oh, that must be from Pippa Hawkins, because this is where Pippa Hawkins used to hang out. Long letter. Birmingham, 27th of October. Hello, sis. How are things in the big city? Here in Broome, things are not so good. It seems the flu is here again, and we have many new cases of infection in the neighborhood. Do you remember Miss Scheller, the old drinking hag from the third floor? She passed away two days ago, and her flat is already occupied again. <laughs> Jeez, you'd have to pay me a huge amount of money to go sleep in the bed in which a woman died of the flu just a few hours ago. Sorry I did not take the time to quickly answer your last letter. Between taking care of little Paul, Mum, Dad, and my job at the factory, I rarely find time to write to my favorite sister. By the way, your son says hello to his Auntie Pippa. Pippa's dad, I'm sorry. You should see the little bugger, already driving me mad. And Mum says you bring back some of those marvelous cakes. Uh, next time you come back home. In your last letter, you told me you thought about quitting your job at the Pembroke Hospital. I have to tell you, Pip, you better think twice. There are always jobs at the factory, but wages are shit, and it's as boring as a day without a shag. Oh, I have a new fiancé, and no, I'm no slut, you moral bitch, you. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> so if you really want to quit and do something more useful than counting the dead every morning, maybe you better stay in London and join that band you told me about. The Guard or Preven, something like that. Never heard of them, but if they're like you said, some sort of civil militia trying to make a difference, then maybe it's a good choice for you. Just be sure to let the others go in front. That's how my poor Billy got killed in France, by leading too many patrols. Bloody war. Anyway, come back as soon as you can and give me all the good news before that. Uh, affect your affectionate sister, Lucy, Paul, Mom, and Dad. New hint for Pippa Hawkins available? They're dead. They're, they're very, very dead. I've looked all around the hospital and the surrounding area for the next letter from my father, and I can't find it. I'm thinking either... The very unlikely thing is that it's maybe in the morgue right here, because the circle covers like 75% of the morgue. But I don't want to check because that's a load zone, and I don't want to wait for it to load for like two minutes. More likely, though, I think, is that it's probably actually in the hospital, but maybe just in an area that I can't access yet. Maybe if I progress with the main quest some more, I'll gain access to it. Anyway, for now, I think I'll end this episode here. I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, I'm going to head over to Whitechapel and give some people some medicine, and I also want to follow up on a quest that I have there, this one for Mason Swanborough. I want to see if they can read that braille thing that I found. <laughs>